Whether for their size, their patterning, or their incredible defensive displays, rattlesnakes captivate our attention like few other reptiles do. Undoubtedly, one of the things that makes rattlesnakes so famous is their impressive venom. My name is Benzino, and my mission is to inspire you to learn about and conserve the amazing wildlife that's just waiting to be discovered all around us. And there are few places on Earth that boast quite as much amazing wildlife as the deserts of the southwestern United States, including the highest diversity of rattlesnakes found anywhere on planet Earth. Tonight, we're headed out into the deserts of southwestern Arizona on the hunt for a species of rattlesnake with venom like no other. While the first rattlesnake that we encountered this night wasn't our target species, it was still one of the most exciting snake encounters of the trip. Okay, y'all. This is an amazing organism right here. Let me cut this light. This is actually the most venomous rattlesnake on planet Earth. This is a baby Mojave rattlesnake. Let's see if we can get him up here. Oh, wow, how tiny. Now, Mojave rattlesnakes are considered the most venomous rattlesnake in the world. There's two reasons for that. For one thing, they make an extremely toxic venom. And Mojaves in particular make their own brand of neurotoxin, which is literally called Mojave toxin. And what that's going to do when it enters the bloodstream of an animal is basically going to attack your synapses. So it's gonna prevent your brain from effectively communicating with your organ systems. And that combined with the huge amount of venom that they can potentially produce as adults is why the Mojave is considered the most venomous rattlesnake on earth. Although technically they're not the most toxic. Now this is a teeny baby, probably born in the last few days because this is actually the birthing season for Mojave rattlesnakes. It's the wet season and this is when there is the most prey abundance for a small rattlesnake like this. Now a baby Mojave is probably preying on lots of insects and also lots of small vertebrates, but as fully grown adults, these can actually be about four feet long. So they are mid-sized rattlesnakes, not quite as big as the diamondbacks, but definitely pretty large animals. Now it takes these animals about two to three years to reach maturity, at which point they can reproduce, but they can actually live about 20 years in the wild. You might actually notice the dorsal patterning is really similar to a diamondback. They literally do have diamonds. You can tell the difference between them though, because the banding pattern of a Mojave has white bands, which are larger, significantly larger than the dark bands. Whereas in Western diamondbacks, typically the bands are a little more even. Additionally, Mojaves are sometimes known as the Mojave green rattlesnake because their base color can sometimes be very green, but Western diamondbacks rarely have green color morphs. Typically, they're gonna be more yellow to brown. And finally, these have some very large and pronounced scales in between their eyes that look very different than those of the Western diamondback rattlesnake. And these are open desert specialists. So we find these in very similar habitats to other rattlesnakes like the sidewinders. This is one of those species that as a snake lover, I've wanted to see my entire life because their claim to fame is their venom. But as you can see, there's no reason to fear these snakes. We can just give them the respect they deserve and appreciate them for the beautiful and ecologically important animals that they truly are. We'll let this little guy get right back in his natural environment. I wish him all the best. I hope he eats good and you get nice and big for me, okay? See you, little friend. Well, I was already beyond content with that amazing baby Mojave. We pressed on and continued searching for our target species. As we entered a rocky canyon area, my flashlight beam illuminated a familiar texture hidden amongst the boulders. Okay, right there, it's my lifer tiger rattlesnake. I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh man, shoot, he's fast. Okay, 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 okay. Hopefully, oh shh, he might roll down here towards me. Let's see here. Wow. All right, here he comes, here he comes. Here he comes. Slow him down. Okay. Keep him low, keep him low. <sighs> okay, are we rolling still? Yep. Holy cow. Yeah, this bring him in just, like, bring him right, right here is the tiger rattlesnake the most lethal rattlesnake on planet Earth. Holy cow. This is my lifer right here. Oh, these have the highest LD50 value of any rattlesnake species in the world, even higher than the Mojave rattlesnake. 
The reason they're not considered the most deadly rattlesnake in the world is because Mojaves have a much higher venom yield than our tiger rattlesnakes do. Now the reason our tigers have such toxic venom is that their venom actually contains the extremely powerful neurotoxin Mojave toxin, which the Mojave rattlesnake also has, but tigers, they actually make more of it. Now this is a very unique species ecologically as well. These are medium-sized rattlesnakes, usually less than three feet long. They're not nearly as big as the diamondbacks. So what they're doing, they're using that lethal venom to take out primarily reptile prey. So these are mostly lizard eaters, and you'll notice they have a tiny head compared to the rest of their body. The reason they have that is because these are often found in rocky crags. So they can get that head down into the crags after lizards. Now this is a very, very robust animal. You can see classic pit viper body plan, and then we have that huge rattle at the end. That rattle, of course, being made of interlocking keratin segments. Now the name tiger rattlesnake comes from the dorsal patterning of these animals, which is this very stark banding pattern. It looks similar in body plan to the speckled rattlesnake, and they are actually very closely related, and they occupy similar habitats, but our tiger rattlesnakes are much more specialized for preying on lizards, whereas our specks eat rodents and lizards in pretty equal quantities. So it's a pretty cool example of two similar species partitioning niches between each other. This is a species I did not think we were gonna find on the trip. It is literally the last night we could have possibly seen them. This truly is incredible. And even though this is the most lethal rattlesnake on the planet, there is no reason to fear these animals. You can see, even when handled, as long as I'm being calm and collected, this animal is not aggressive. It's not trying to bite me, it's not even striking. All it wants to do is survive the best way that it knows how, just like every other animal on the planet. And these are ecologically irreplaceable rattlesnakes. They're so important in that middle level of the ecosystem, keeping populations of prey items in check while still providing food for those apex predators, like maybe a California king snake or something like that. <sighs> Absolutely amazing encounter. So crazy to get to work with this animal. This is a dream for me. This is such a cool species. This was my number one rattlesnake target here in Arizona. This is just incredible. And we'll get this amazing snake right back in its habitat. This is wild. Okay, Cole, I'm gonna set it down now. Oh, <laughs> that's crazy. Okay, if you had to pick one favorite thing about tiger rattlesnakes, what would it be? I'd have to say they're tiny little heads compared to their massive bodies. Just goofy looking rattlesnakes. Yeah, my favorite thing is the venom. These things are potent and uh, yeah, you don't want to pet them. Here's your sneak peek at the species that will be featured in the next episode of The Wild Report. I'll see you next time, but until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.